Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start Oh yeah, it's a Saturday show It's a Saturday show it's a Saturday show. 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 Bugs? And friends. What a beautiful day, Fred. I'm so glad you joined us out here camping. Sure enough, Toby. I needed to take a little vacation. Some time off does a bullfrog good. I agree. I wonder where Otto went, though. You guys, you guys, you guys, come here. You gotta see this. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, but come here and look at this. All right, Otto, this better be good. You guys gotta see this anthill. It's so cool. Wait, Otto, you like bugs? Yeah, bugs and insects are really awesome. They're great to have around. I have to agree. I love snacking on flies, but I also believe that bugs do a lot of good. Hmm, I don't know. These ants are so cool. See the network of tunnels they dug? How ingenious. Well, I don't really mind bugs. I just don't really want to be their best friend. Oh, Toby, come on. I bet if we ask the crew to tell us more about bugs that you'll be comfortable in no time. Is that what we're gonna do for today's show? You betcha, bud. First, let's send it out to the crew for the word of the day. Hey, Allison, how you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> Great. You know, I was going to film Word of the Day here, but Kashi's out of town at the seaside. Oh, how nice. Could you help me with that? Oh, definitely. Great. Well, you know, we're talking all about bugs in, the <laughs> oh. in this episode. <laughs> and I was wondering what kind of bug you would be if you could be anything. Huh. What kind of bug I would be? Yeah. Hmm. I would like to be a bumblebee because they're fuzzy and they're cute. And they go, what would you be? I think I would like to be a pill bug because they love to eat the strawberries in my garden. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, do you want to do the word of the day with me? Yeah, that'd great. Be great. All right. Boop. Well, let's see what it says. Huh, antenna? Right, antenna. You know what antennas are? <laughs> That's right. Some people call them feelers and they help an insect learn about its environment. Yeah, they can sense touch and smell and taste. That's right, and sometimes even different chemicals. Wow. Well, are you ready to do the summer game code? Yeah, sounds fun. Okay, here it is. Why don't you tell us how many letters it is? It is six letters. That's right. And this word means a kind of silky casing for insect eggs to hatch in. And it's also a very famous Ron Howard movie. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big points. That's right. <laughs> Well, good luck, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Otto, I'm not sure that made me any more comfortable. Well, if that didn't melt your heart, then the story of Ernest the Slug will. Ernest the Slug? Yes, my friend. 
listen closely to the tale of Ernest the Slug. Hi, I'm Jackie, and I love bugs, worms, slugs, and all invertebrates. I'm here to tell the story of Ernest, the very lucky, very adventurous slug. One rainy fall day in 2020, my friend Ellie sent me a picture of a creature she found living on her new houseplant. I told her it was a slug, so Ellie released it outside. But later that afternoon, I saw another picture and I realized this slug was different. It had come from the greenhouse where the plant was raised. I was worried the slug wouldn't survive outdoors in Michigan. I did some research and I learned that this species of slug is found farther south in the United States in a warm and humid climate. I told Ellie the bad news. A few hours later, Ellie and I and our two husbands searched Ellie's big garden. It was raining and the Michigan slugs were out and about. Just as I was ready to give up, I lifted a piece of bark and there was a slug from the greenhouse. I decided to name him Ernest. Michigan was too cold for Ernest to live outside. I wanted him to live in a warm house and enjoy the rest of his life in comfort with lots of fresh veggies and clean places to hide. But I soon learned that Ernest had other plans. Ernest moved into my home in October and he settled right in. At first, he stayed in a temporary enclosure without much space to roam. I fed him many different foods to learn what he liked the most, and I bought him a tiny fairy house to sleep in during the day because slugs don't like to be in the sunlight. Ernest was soon thriving on a plentiful, healthy diet. Before long, he found himself upgraded to a spacious slug mansion. Ernest loved cucumber, spirulina, mushrooms, and green beans. He woke up every night around 10 p.m., ate a big dinner and roamed his mansion, then returned to sleep inside his fairy house before the sun came up. Sometimes he enjoyed his cucumber so much he slept in it. Ernest celebrated the holidays with our family, but shortly after the new year, he had a surprise for all of us. One night while I was cleaning, I found tiny clear orbs buried under the soil. Ernest had laid eggs. Soon, newly hatched slugs, which are colorless and smaller than a grain of rice, would be sharing Ernest's home. I was so excited about the babies, and yet I was sad because I knew this meant that Ernest and his family needed a more appropriate habitat. By the end of April, Ernest's babies were almost half of their adult size. The slugs liked to sleep together, so they would pick one fairy house and squeeze into it, but I knew they would soon outgrow their space. I planned a trip to take Ernest and his babies where it is warm and humid so they could live outdoors. I found a spot where his species was documented by biologists, and then I used citizen science maps to learn where they had been sighted. On May 6th, my husband and I, Ernest, and a bucket of baby slugs drove to a forest near the Appalachian Mountains. We hiked until we found a safe spot where other slugs had been recorded. I settled the slugs under a big rock amid fallen trees, left one more meal of cucumber, and tucked them in to sleep until the sun went down. I like to imagine the slugs did what they did every night. Ernest and the babies woke up around 10 p.m. They ate a big dinner and they roamed, but this time they found a whole forest to explore with a promise of adventure ahead. And instead of going back to sleep inside their fairy house, the slugs would find a nice spot in a rotten log, snuggle up with each other like they always did, and go to sleep as the sun came up. And that's the story of Ernest, the very lucky, very adventurous slug. What do you call a bossy pill bug? Give up a controlly pulley. Okay, Otto, that one got me. I think I'm ready to learn a little bit more about bugs, but how do we go about doing that? We could go bug hunting. Bug hunting? Yeah, bug hunting. You see, most bugs are itty bitty, but if we sharpen our senses, look carefully, and listen a little bit, we can find some awesome bugs right around here. Fred's right. 
I bet if we look really carefully, we can find some really cool bugs. What do you say, Toby? I like it. Let's go. Uh, Katie, what are you doing with all those bugs inside the house? Oh, George, they're not alive. Amanda was cleaning out her closet and she found her old insect collection. In the house? Yeah. In the closet? Yeah. But why, Katie? That's bugs. She has these from when she was studying to be a science teacher. Oh, well, I guess that is kind of cool. So we can see and study them up close and not get stung or have them crawl all over the couch. Yeah, that's what I think too. I mean, look how pretty they are. Some are so big. I think my favorite is the monarch butterfly. Well, I like how she has so many cicadas. Yeah, this is really cool. We should ask Mana to keep these out so we can spend time figuring out what they all are. There's so many. Well, I like that idea. And you know Mana will say yes. She loves it when we spend time learning together. She does. Hey, let's go find a snack and find Manda and ask her about these bugs. Okay, let's do it. What is it? This appears to be a really big piece of wood, like the trunk of a tree. But what are those grooves? They go back and forth and all over the wood. They're not very deep, but they're everywhere. What are they? I saw the most attractive and in love spider couple the other day. They were walking arm in arm. In arm, in arm, in arm, in arm, in arm, in arm. In that bug hunt was a lot of fun, Toby. Do you want to show everyone what kind of bugs we found? I sure can, Otto. Okay, so here's what we found on our bug hunt. This one looks like flying pocket lint, but it's actually an alder aphid, in its flying form, of course. This is an orchard spider. It's got great colors, green and yellow, and it's shiny. Oh, and we got to see it catch an ant that fell off the cabin. Here's some ants. They're brownish colored. There are so many types of ants that it's hard to figure out which kind these are unless you had them under a microscope. Still pretty cool. This dude is a Neandra beetle, the not so long longhorn beetle. It was the biggest bug we found on our hunt. Fred wanted me to pick him up and move him, but I said no way. This is the horned Pasilis. Sometimes he's called the patent leather beetle because his body looks like shiny leather. He was chill. And these little fellas are common pill bugs, AKA roly polies. I think they're my new favorite bug. That sure was fun, but uh, Otto, what if I didn't have any bugs around and I wanted to attract them? What do I do then? Are you trying to attract them to eat them, Fred? Yeah, I mean, not just to look at. Well, Lucy can show us one way that you can make a bug hotel. Check it out. Lucy, dear, you were so kind to invite me to your home. I was wondering if we had room for any other winged creatures. Well, Clarissa, who did you have in mind? Well, as you know, bugs of all types play an important part in our ecosystem. And I would love to provide an inviting habitat for them. 
What if we created an inviting space for them outside the home? That way they could sort of come and go like, like a bug hotel. A bug hotel? That sounds like quite a resplendent urban dwelling for our crawling, flying, and buzzing friends. I know, and easy to make. Let me show you what we need to get started. The first step is to gather all sorts of natural materials from outside to provide interesting spaces in your hotel. Things that bugs near you enjoy, such as bark and twigs, moss, bamboo, pine cones, exciting spaces to crawl in. Like this? That's exactly right. Then look around your house for something to be the hotel, like an empty plastic bottle, or a milk carton, a clay jar, an empty can, anything that can hold all the exciting natural materials that you found. Before you start assembling your bug hotel, you wanna make sure your container is clean and dry, and then get started filling it however you like. Think about what would be fun for bugs. There is no right or wrong. It might take a while, to see how you can get all your pieces to fit in there. It's sort of like a puzzle. Once you've created a hotel that you like, put it somewhere outside like your garden, yard, or balcony. Check on it in a few days to see if anyone has moved in. These grooves were left by the larva of the emerald ash borer. Emerald ash borers are an invasive species of bug that were first found in Michigan in 2002. The larva dig themselves into the bark of ash trees and eat, making it hard for the trees to move water and nutrients. These logs covered in grooves lived where the Traverwood Branch Library now stands, and when the library was built, the ash trees were incorporated into the library itself. How cool. That's what it is. Hey folks, I'm here at Bluebird Meadows in Mayberry State Park. It's one of my favorite places in the world to be on a muggy summer's evening because at nightfall here, the air comes alive and literally sparkles with thousands of fireflies. This is a perfect spot for them because there's a lot of tall grasses, bushes, trees for them to take shelter in during the day. And when they come out at night, not much other light to compete with. There's also a nice green froggy bog just through these woods behind me and fireflies love marshy woodland edges like this one. It's kind of hard to capture just how many there are here at night, so trust me when I say this is something you're going to want to experience for yourself to really see how truly beautiful it is. And just like all beautiful things in this world, there's some very cool science behind it. Fireflies are also known as lightning bugs or glowworms, but they're actually a type of beetle, and they display a fascinating trait of nature called bioluminescence which means something like life lighting up. In other words, they can make their own light. This in itself is unusual for a land-dwelling species. Most bioluminescent species on Earth live in the dark depths of the ocean where other natural light can't reach. Another unusual aspect of bioluminescence is what the Greek philosopher Aristotle referred to as its cold light, because unlike most other forms of light production, these little life lamps create practically no heat in the process, making this a nearly 100% efficient form of energy conversion. How are they able to do this? Through a controlled chemical reaction in their bodies, the combination of oxygen and a mix of certain types of molecules and enzymes that are common to all known bioluminescent life forms. These reactions occur in photocyte cells in their abdomens and are the source of that lovely green-yellow glow. There are about 2,000 
different species of fireflies all over the world. And each different species has its own distinct pattern to its flashes. A specific signal it uses as a blinking beacon in the night to find and communicate with other fireflies of the same species. So this light show is not only beautiful, it's also an important evolutionary development that's crucial to their survival. And to see it, sometimes all you need to do is turn off your lights and step outside. B-roll. So, Toby, do you feel more comfortable about bugs? About how they work and how important they are to every ecosystem? I sure am, Otto. Thanks to you and Fred, my worries about bugs have disappeared. That's really great, Toby. It sure is. All right. Come on, you two. I think I saw a butterfly go that way. Well, that's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our bug adventure. If you'd like more info, you can go to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. And if you'd like to drop us a line, you can email tss at aadl.org. Until next time. Are you guys coming or what? Keep on buzzing. Bye.